If you're new to painting, you might be wondering how do you paint something so that it looks like it's made out of metal? I know that when I started out in drawing and painting, I thought this was almost impossible to do. But in this week's video, I'm going to show you that this is a lot easier to paint than you might think. Basically, it's all about painting an illusion, and in order to get this illusion to look correct, we need a high contrast of very bright values next to dark values. I'm going to be painting this still life with an airbrush and acrylic paint on canvas, but this concept is exactly the same in drawing, oil painting, or digital illustration. So I took a photo of this SK adjustable wrench and some high contrast lighting, and this dramatic lighting is just going to help sell the illusion that we're going for. And if you're going to be painting along with me, I'll have my full resolution photo and the gridded version both up on the members page. You could transfer over your outlines or your contour drawing any way you like. My favorite way of doing this is by using a grid, and this time I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I know that some of you guys said that you like drawing out your initial lines using a grid, but you don't want those grid lines on your canvas. So what you could do instead is set up your grid on a separate piece of paper. I set this one up to the exact dimensions of the canvas that I'm painting on, and I'm using a one by one grid with each one of these squares being an inch and a half. And if you'd like, you could label the rows and columns so they don't get lost. I'm drawing this with a 4H pencil, starting on the left side, and then just working from one square to the next. I'm going to speed through this because I want to get to the painting, but there's nothing complicated here. As I do this, I'm taking my time and just working from one square to the next. All the information that I need is on that gridded photo, so I just want to copy it the best I can. From there, I used some graphite powder on the back of that piece of paper and then just drew over it to transfer it on the canvas. So you can see here that this comes out a lot cleaner. You don't have any lines to deal with and you don't have to erase them out. And if you're just starting out and you don't want to deal with grids or drawing, there's nothing wrong with tracing it, using a projector, anything to help you get those lines on so you can focus on the painting. I placed on a piece of frisket film over my drawing and what I'm going to do here is cut out the outlines of this wrench. Just like drawing a straight line, if I want to cut out a straight line, I'm going to use a ruler. I'm using an X-Acto blade here and I'm using a small amount of pressure. You really don't need that much to cut through the frisket film. Using an X-Acto blade is kind of like drawing with a pencil. You just want to take your time, slowly work your way around the outline. And I'm doing this on gessoed canvas, which is actually pretty forgiving. Even if I apply too much pressure, I never have to worry about actually cutting through the canvas itself because that gesso is pretty thick. Once this is cut out, I just remove the center in a single piece and I don't want to throw this away. I'm going to save this for later because you're going to see that we'll be using it when we paint in the cast shadow. I'm going to be using two colors for this painting, Payne's Gray and Black. If you don't have the color Payne's Gray, that's fine. You could do the whole thing with black. I'm starting on the upper left hand side here with Payne's Gray diluted about 10% with distilled water. And what I'm doing here is just trying to get an even thin coat of this color across the whole surface. The reason that I'm starting with Payne's Gray is because it's a lighter value than the black, meaning that it's going to be more forgiving. If I was just using black, it's really easy to accidentally spray too much, so this just gives me a bit more room for error. The color Payne's Gray is actually a very cool color, so this almost looks blue on the canvas. Don't worry about that. When we spray black over the top of it later, it's going to knock down a lot of that blue. On the left hand side of the screen, I'm placing up the photo that I took of this wrench. In this way, you can see what I'm looking at and referring to as I'm painting. I notice that this part of the steel is in a dark cast shadow. So I'm using a shield with a straight line and lining it up parallel to that frisket film underneath. As I spray over this, it's going to give me a sharp line just to map that in. On the upper left here, part of that steel is kind of rounding over, so it's getting darker. I'm just spraying this in freehand because that frisket is going to give me a sharp line along the outside. And then as it transfers over to the highlight, it's a bit smoother. And because I'm spraying this in freehand, that's going to make that one side softer and the frisket side sharp. There's a sharp transition over here on the right where we go from a pretty bright highlight to a shadow. So again, I'm using the shield which has a straight line on it, lining it up with that, and then spraying over to the right. This is going to need to be much darker, but we'll get to that later on. For now, I just want to map in the places where these shadows are. If you look at the photo reference, you'll definitely notice that there's a good amount of rust on this wrench. And that was my fault because I was working on my snowblower last winter and I forgot to clean this off before I put it away. 
I was able to remove a good amount of the rust using some sandpaper and some steel wool, but it's clearly still there. So even though it was terrible for the wrench, it's kind of cool for this painting because it's going to add a lot more texture that we could paint in. So I'm just going to start by spraying in a few soft dots with the airbrush, just doing this all freehand. And this is going to be some of the shadows and some of the darker areas for the rust. And remember what I said in the beginning of the video, to paint something so that it looks like metal, we need a high contrast of values, darks right next to lights. So I'm going to come in with my eraser here and just start erasing into this paint where this bright highlight is. I need this area very bright and this stick eraser just isn't strong enough. So what I'm going to do is switch over to something more aggressive and that's an electric eraser. And you don't need much pressure with an electric eraser. All I'm doing is just tapping it to the canvas and then pulling on it so we get a thin line. I'm trying to run these up parallel to each other so it looks like there's some brushing on that steel. Once I have some of those highlights out, I'm going to switch over to my texture template, which I use for skin textures, and then spray this into that shadow area where that rust is, just to add some sharper, darker, more defined dots in that rust. The best way to build up textures, in my opinion, is always by going slowly. So I'm going to go back over this area on the right and darken up that shadow. Just use my shield there, spray it over it. So what I'm doing here is going back to my stick eraser, and now I'm just erasing out as much texture as I can within this area. I'm trying to apply more pressure where the brighter areas are in the photo reference, and then as I move into the shadows, some less pressure. But you really can't mess this up. It's all about just adding as much texture as you can. The worst thing that will happen is it'll get too light, but with an airbrush, that's never a big deal because we could spray the paint back over it to darken it back up. I'll paint in this darker little notch here with my shield and then just add some texture to the lower part of this wrench, just like before. And at this point, I want to get the frisk it off so I can see what this looks like because for me, it's very hard to judge values when there's frisk it on a painting. So I masked out this small little cutout in the back of the wrench and then I'm going back to my airbrush with the paint's gray to lightly spray some paint over the back here. I'll add a bit more paint toward the back here because that area is going to be a lot darker later on. Then when I remove the frisket, this is what we get. It kind of looks cartoony at this point, right? It doesn't look realistic at all. The reason that it looks like a cartoon right now is just because it's very flat. It doesn't have any real highlights in it, no real shadows, and it basically has an outline. So let's fix that. What we'll need to do is start adding some more texture to it, some more highlights, some darker shadows, and we'll start pushing it so that it looks more realistic. And if you're just starting out in painting, I just want to point out that the beginning is always the most difficult part. Because at this point, it just looks strange. It looks nothing like the final painting, but that's because we're going to have to slowly get to it. So you just have to understand that the beginning of a painting is never going to really look good. It's about slowly working your way toward that final product. I'm coming back in with my eraser, and just like before, I'm just going to continually pull out some more paint add some more texture to it. There are a few pretty bright, thin, specular highlights in this painting. You can see on the reference here, and there's a few ways to go about doing this. One option is to use an X-Acto blade, which I'm doing here. You can see that I'm just running this along that edge between the shadow and then the top of the wrench, and I get a very thin, bright highlight. When you use an X-Acto blade, you're basically pulling out 100% of the paint. So these highlights are gonna be very bright because we're exposing the gesso underneath the painting. Another option that I've recently started using is a small chisel. These are for modelers and it's made by GSI Creos. It comes to a very sharp point at the end and it works very similar to an X-Acto blade. Either option's fine. Sometimes an X-Acto blade wants to pull out in one direction because it builds up a burr at the end of it. So the chisel might be a little bit more helpful, but I recommend trying both and just find out what you like most. And no surprise here, I'm going right back to my eraser and just pulling out some areas that seem too dark. I want to kind of brighten this up and again, just work toward that final painting. Each time I make a pass with the eraser, it just adds some more random texture to it. And that's really important for a final painting so it doesn't look too sterile. I'm going to switch to the color black now and start darkening up some areas. So you can see here that I just took some of that frisket from before, just cut out a piece of it and lined it up over the top. I find it very difficult to line up an entire piece of frisket that you cut out before, you know, across the whole painting. So when I come back, I usually just cut out a part of it and just line up pieces, the part that I'm painting. So now that this frisket's on, I'm going to commit some more of this dark paint. Again, I'm using black paint here, and I'm just going over the areas that I painted before, just darkening them up and then getting rid of that blue color. And of course, you could just start by using the black paint, you know, do this entire painting only using black. The reason that I start with that paint's gray is because it's a little bit easier to spray on. It doesn't get as dark as quick, and it's also easier to erase out. 
but there's nothing wrong with doing this whole painting just using black paint. If you do though, you just need to be more careful. To darken up this texture here, I used my texture template, sprayed over it for a few dots. Now I'm just coming in freehand, adding some more. This is going to give a variety between sharper ones and some softer ones. In order to paint in this dark area where this adjustment screw is, I'm going to use Frisket again, place this on, and cut it out. When I spray the black on top of this, I don't want to lose the place where these textures are. So what I'm doing is using a ruler, and then I'm just coming in with an electric eraser and tapping a few dots across the ruler. This will brighten up that area of the knurled steel, and when I spray over it, it's just going to be a lot brighter so I don't lose it. The darkest areas are around the outside here, so I'm focusing the spray toward the outer parts of this frisket film, and I don't want to spray too much because if you spray too much on frisket, it could easily get underneath it and you'll get some runs and some lines. So just go slow with this and add a few layers until it's dark enough. I'll use a shield and add some of this black paint to the right side here, and if it's too dark now, I could soft erase into it, and where I want an area brighter, I erase more, just use more pressure, and where I want it darker, I use less. And I'll just work my way around the front here using some shields, using some frisket, with the black paint and darken up some areas that just seem too light at this point. Then right back over to the eraser, erase up the highlights and add some texture in between these dark points. So you can see at this point the illusion is starting to come together. We're getting these bright areas next to the dark areas and it's just starting to look like metal. I noticed that I made a mistake here. This angle's wrong when I cut into the frisket, so it's not a big deal. I'm coming back with my freehand shield, just spraying over it with that black paint to fix it. And as long as you add the paint up slowly, don't go too dark with it, you could basically fix any mistake in this style of painting. So I want some of these highlights a bit brighter to push that illusion. So I'm coming in here with my electric eraser. This is just a lot more aggressive than a stick eraser. And as I'm adding these in, I'm always paying attention to the reference photo because I don't want to get carried away with these highlights. The bright highlights are very important, but so are those very dark values. So I want to make sure that I don't erase all of them. And if you'd like to add in some different textures, you can mix up the tools. You'll see I'm using that chisel here, just scratching out a few lines into this paint to just kind of break it up. And when I want more control with my erasing, that's when I use a stick eraser because this is on a gessoed canvas. And that gesso is really important because it allows me to soft erase into the paint. I want to add in a cast shadow here, so what I'm using is a piece of frisket that I saved before from the center that we cut out, placing it on the top part of the metal here, and then just spraying over it. And I used Payne's Gray for that to give me a cooler shadow. At this point, I would say that the front of the wrench is basically done. You'll see that I'm just going to kind of play around with it and just brighten up some areas that seem a bit too dark. Painting textures like this can be a lot of fun, so just try to enjoy that process and just kind of play around with it. The more you experiment, the more you try different ways ways of adding in these textures the more you learn. So let's move along here to this adjustment screw and you'll notice that in the center there's some very bright lines and in between those bright lines are some dark lines so I'll be using two tools for this one is my stick eraser and the other is a black colored pencil. For the stick eraser what I do is basically just rip off the end of it with my fingernail this way I get a chisel on one edge so I could really cut in a sharp line with it. Now these type of erasers dull pretty quickly, so what you'll see me doing here is just rotating it to the other side so I have another sharp edge. And then when I erase a line like this, I'm using a moderate amount of pressure and just going over it a few times. Each pass is going to help lighten it up more and more. And then in order to add those dark thin lines in between it, you'll see I'm just using a black colored pencil and I just draw it in freehand. Now I need to blend the two sides of this in, so I'm going back to the airbrush with black paint in it, and you can see I'm just spraying on the left side and then over to the right side on each one of these highlights. I'm adding a small amount of paint here, I want to make sure I don't rush this, and all it's going to help do is just kind of blend those highlights away so it looks like this part is kind of rounding away from us. There's a knurled edge on this screw, and it has some very thin bright highlights in it. So I figured one of the easiest ways to do this would be to use that chisel again and then just lightly pull out a bunch of little parallel lines. I'm just going to start on the left side of each one of these, move over to the right, adding one about evenly spaced. And of course there's a ton of ways to add small highlights like this, I just figured this was the easiest for me. And if you don't have a chisel like this, an X-Acto blade will work just the same. Then I'll just add in the rest, erase out the center to make it brighter, and then blend the edges smooth. And that's it.
From here, I'm just going to paint in the rest of the handle. Luckily, there's not too much texture on it, so this isn't going to be that difficult to do. As I spray this in using the frisket and some shields for those darker lines, I can come back in with my eraser to erase out the highlights right on top of these. And all I'm doing is paying attention to the reference photo that I took, because that's going to tell me where these highlights are. And finally, let's finish up painting the rear handle. And in order to do this, I'm just using my frisket from before, placing it over the back, and then I'm also going to use some blue painter's tape to just kind of mass off the other sides. A lot of this rear handle is in shadow, so I want to get the SK logo in first. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just using a black colored pencil, and this is just the easiest for me if I need to add in some dark thin lines. And then finally, switch over to the color black, and then just work my way around the back, working my way forward. And that's pretty much it. Most of this rear handle is in a dark shadow, so there's just not too much detail there. It's just kind of hidden. And at this point, the wrench is basically done, but what I'm going to do is just add a cast shadow to the bottom of it. This way, it's going to make it look like it's sitting on the table, rather than just floating on the canvas. So after masking it off, I'm going back to the color Payne's Gray, and I'm just going to spray this below it. I'm trying to spray more paint toward the top. This way, the shadow has a very subtle gradient to it. And from here, I'm just going to pull out a very thin high highlight in between the wrench and the cast shadow. And in order to do this, I'm going to use a shield, find a part of the curve that fits it, and then I'm going to run this chisel over this edge a few times. This way, it just is going to give a very thin, bright highlight in between the wrench and the cast shadow. So instead of an outline along the outer part of this wrench, we have a highlight, and that's just going to help make it look more realistic. It's going to look like some light is reflecting off of it. And that's it for this airbrush tutorial. You can see that it's really not that hard. It's about breaking it down into smaller pieces and just going for that high contrast of light. So I hope you guys give this one a shot. It's definitely a fun little painting and it looks cool at the end. And of course, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. And I'd like to wrap this one up by giving a thank you to the generous support of the channel members. First, I'd like to welcome the newest members, Herbert and Thomas, both at tier three. Thank you guys so much for joining and welcome. And thank you, SM, for rejoining at his tier three. I really appreciate that. Three members who deserve a special shout out for being members for one year. Dwayne M. Shibley and oh man, Tarkin Superbus, the king of Rome. Thank you, guys. And finally, thank you to the current channel members, Donovich, Grant, Tony, Erland, Israel, NH, Adrian, Joshua, Svavar, Fernando, Takuji, Airbrush Art and Customs, Hector, Mike, Peter C., Peter G., William, Rick, Robin, John, Adam, Rick M., M. Webb, Leon, Mackie Mark, Mir Creative, Jan, Cyril, Michael, Carl, Pete, and Ken. Thank you, guys. I'll see everyone back here next Friday.